Hello everyone and welcome to our System Dynamics video tutorial. This is the first of a series of videos that explain how to model and simulate the behavior of dynamic systems using System Dynamics and the iThink modeling environment. Next to these videos, you can also find detailed explanations and demonstration models on our website www.business-prototyping.com. In this first session, we would like to introduce causal loop diagrams. Causal loop diagrams are a very simple but powerful way of visualizing the important parts of a system and how they interrelate. The parts of a system are visualized using textual identifiers. The connections between the parts are shown using arrows pointing in the direction of influence. Creating a causal loop diagram of a given system is actually quite simple. You start with the parts you already know and keep asking what influences this part until you reach parts that are at the system's boundary or parts that will not change over time. Then you go in the other direction and keep asking which other parts of the system does this part influence. If that part is already there, you connect them. Otherwise, you create a new part. In this session, I'm going to demonstrate how to build a causal loop diagram that investigates a system that's familiar to all of us, getting a set of open tasks done by a particular deadline. The problem definition already hints at two of this system's parts in this case. One part of the system is the number of open tasks, the other part is the deadline. I'm using the modeling environment I think from IC systems to create this model. I think uses modules to draw causal loop diagrams. In the standard setting, modules are represented by rounded squares. I prefer not to show these symbols on my causal loop diagrams. In order to remove them, I choose Preferences and click the setting Name Only Modules. So, that looks better. Let's get back to our project management problem and start with the project's deadline. The first question we need to answer is, what influences the deadline? For our simple model, we assume the deadline is set from the outside and does not change. Therefore, the deadline is a constant and does not have any influencing factors. In systems thinking parlance, we say the deadline is at the system's boundary. Now we ask the question, what parts of the system does the deadline influence? Well, try and think yourself into the situation. The first question you have to answer when it comes to getting something done by a deadline is, how much time have I got left? This can easily be modeled by adding a new part, remaining time, again created using a module. I connect the deadline to the remaining time using a building block called connector in iThink. The connector is represented by an arrow. The further away the deadline is, the more time remains. In system dynamics, we speak of positive influence or positive polarity. We visualize this on a diagram by placing a small plus sign next to the connector. In iThink, this is achieved by right-clicking on the end of the connector, choosing the item polarity, and then selecting either positive or negative. In this case, I select positive, which places a small plus sign on the connector between deadline and remaining time. What other parts affect the remaining time? The remaining time not only depends on the deadline, but also on the current date. As the current date moves on, the remaining time gets smaller and smaller, so here we have a negative connection. I therefore add a minus sign to the connector. Up till now we've ignored the open tasks. Clearly, what's still missing in our diagram is the act of working on the tasks. If you think about it, what we're actually interested in here is not the work itself, 
but in how quickly we can do this. Let's capture that information in a new part we shall call the completion rate. The higher the completion rate is, the faster the set of open tasks will get smaller, so we place a small minus sign on the connector. What does the completion rate depend on? Well, we know how much time remains, measured in days, let's say. But haven't said anything about the number of hours per day we can invest in getting our tasks done. We capture this information in a new part I shall call Workday. Clearly, the more hours you put in, the higher the completion rate is going to be. We capture this information with a small plus sign placed next to the connector. What other factors influence the completion rate? Well, next to the number of hours you work on your tasks, there's also the question of how productively you use your hours. Do you spend every minute of every hour working on the tasks at hand, or do you use some of your time daydreaming, surfing the web, or chatting to colleagues? Let's capture this aspect of working in a new part and name it Productivity. It's obvious that the higher the productivity is, the higher the completion rate will be, so I add a positive polarity. Let's quickly review our diagram. We have captured our understanding of how tasks are affected by productivity and workday. But how does the remaining time come into this? Well, if you're like me, then your productivity isn't always the same, and neither are the hours you work. The less of the time remaining until the deadline, the more productive you become, and the longer the hours are that you work. We could directly connect the remaining time to both productivity and workday, but there is a term we typically use to describe this aspect of projects, schedule pressure. The less time that remains, the higher the schedule pressure gets. So let's add a new part to our model to capture this. The higher the schedule pressure gets, the higher my productivity becomes. Unfortunately, the same is true for my workday, which becomes longer and longer. So I place plus signs on both these connectors. Now, have we captured all aspects of schedule pressure? What other factors affect schedule pressure next to the time remaining? Well, clearly if we've completed all tasks and nothing remains to be done, the schedule pressure drops down to zero. Therefore, it's clear, the schedule pressure is also affected by the number of open tasks. If the number of open tasks goes up, so does the schedule pressure. Therefore, we place a small plus sign next to the connector. What other parts of the system does the schedule pressure affect? One thing we might do when the schedule pressure is high is to add further resources to our project. Schedule pressure may also have an effect on the quality of our work. Though both of these aspects are important and worth investigating, we will not consider these here for now in order to keep the initial model simple. But we should take note of these aspects for future investigations. All in all, our causal loop diagram is actually looking quite good. We have captured the essential aspects of what it takes to get a set of open tasks done by a particular deadline. All parts of the system are connected and there are no loose ends. We have ended up with two closed loops that feed back on themselves. 
This observation is important because closed loops mean that the situation we're analyzing is a feedback system. Feedback systems have a closed loop structure that bring results from past action of the system back to control future action. So feedback systems are influenced by their own past behavior. In this case, it means that if you spend too much of your time initially procrastinating, you will be hit by very high schedule pressure the closer the deadline comes. If you invest your time wisely from the beginning, the schedule pressure won't become too bad later on. I'm sure this is something you've experienced yourself. This is actually quite exciting because the feedback system we've analyzed here is fundamental to all project management situations. It's the motor that drives projects to completion. Up till now, our analysis has been qualitative. We've identified the main aspects of the situation and how they influence each other, but we have not said anything about how strong these connections are or how many tasks we're dealing with. We'll do that in the next session, where we'll create a more detailed simulation model on the basis of this causal loop diagram, using a technique known as stock and flow modeling. Goodbye for now, and thank you for watching.